Hey guys, how's it going? Ghosty Rich here today, and today we are going to be building a code hook rack, I guess is what you would call it. So first thing you're going to need is some code hooks. What I've done is I've measured from here to here a total of four feet, which is what I want. So the next thing you want to do is clean up this edge. Now, if you have a planer, you can do that, or you can just do this. And what I like to do is when you get the uh, this wood from the factory uh, or off from the mill or from Home Depot, it's got some oils on it. And what uh, the oils are from are what keep their sawmill continuously going, keeps the friction down, all that other fun stuff. So you want to take like a not so coarse sandpaper and just go over it. Just You want to clean this up. And if you do that, what it's going to do is remove all that gunk and then you can clean up your edges like that. It's already looking better see that so just clean it up a little bit so that way you get the result that you want after you do so and we've cleaned this up you've sanded it if you want to you can go with another finer sandpaper for me I'm looking for a little bit of a rustically rusticy look so yeah the other thing to look for is if it's got stamps or anything on the side for the wood and then either cut that end so that way you don't have the stamps you might have to cut both ends but just make sure that you mark your line, either cut it with a hand saw or cut it with your um, circular saw. After you do this, you're going to need a little thing of testers paint. All you're going to do is, I just get a sample size for this because it's five bucks. After you get that, get your five dollar sample of uh, whatever stain you want. And then after you've got that, stir stick mix it up unless you just bought it then if you just bought it they've just already shucking it so you can just pop that off pour it into a, some people even do styrofoam cups but pour them into something if you pour it into a regular cup line it with a piece of plastic or a ziploc bag so that way you can just dip your brush in after you do that brush strokes make sure that after you sand though take a damp paper towel and just wipe it get that Get all that off of there and then just make sure it's nice and dry before you do anything with it. Take your brush, dip it in the paint, stroke. After you do that, you get to this stage. Let it dry, do all that other fun stuff. After we've let it dry, make sure, like I said, this is two coats. And I don't think I've got the name of the brown that I used. But like I said, this is just a bare premium paint. It was something super cheap. Oh, there we go. Padre Brown. And I didn't even need an outdoor stain, but whatever. Got Padre Brown on here. Next thing you're going to want to do is don't drill your holes yet. Some people might be tempted to just say, hey, I'm going to drill my holes in the corner and be done with it. You don't want to do that yet because you have to see where your studs line up. I do suggest when going with jackets that you go into a stud because if you don't and you just go, oh, you know what, I'm not too worried. Uh, we'll just use drywall anchors that hold 40 pounds. Jackets get heavy. You put five jackets loaded with somebody's keys, wallets, or anything else that are in there or a pea coat, anything like that, boom. You're just going to have this thing fall off the wall and it'll look dumb. So don't do that. All I would suggest doing is measuring out your wall. That's why I said four feet, because if you have no wood within a four foot span, throw your house away. That's really not good. <laughs> but what you might have is steel stud, which in that case you would need steel stud anchors, which I suggest Hilti toggles. I don't have any here to show you. You could just use uh, metal screws and try and go with that and make sure that it's actually made for metal self-tapping screws. So that way it'll self-tap into your steel stud. Either way, I'm gonna show you how to tone out the wall and we'll go from there so that way you know where you're going to do it you can measure where you're going to place it and then what you're going to do is actually pre-drill your holes before we put it up so let me measure this all out and we'll go from there so when you're measuring this out it's important to see where you're going to put your bench if you're going to have a bench or where you want on the wall make sure you're not going to hit it, get hit by any doors and you still have some room try and stay away from electrical if you can and then what you're going to do is just take this, some of them like this one. There you go. Calibrates the depth. We bring it over. See how it's blinking like that? It's just letting me know that there's electrical on there. So you want to make sure you're directly center. 
And then if you find wood there, or if it's acting funky, try another area, because you might actually be on a wood stud. If you want to, you can mark it with dirty fingerprints and then clean it up later with a magic eraser. Uh, or you can use painter's tape. Do not use electrical tape. It could rip your paint off or any other tape. So green painter's tape or beige painter's tape and or use your dirty fingerprints because you can clean them off after. So from this point, I've done that. I'm going to measure that out and I want to kind of keep it an equal distance if I can. So my bench is kind of central, but I still want to make sure that when I open the door, it's not going to hit the bench and it's not going to hit any of the jackets that are hanging there. After taking a look, I got one stud here, one stud here. I measured that and I got four feet, which is perfect. It's just a bit over four feet. So when I put my holes on the end, what I'm going to do is mount the board. And then if I think it needs a little more structure, I could do these inside holes as well. But let's get this up first. Put a drill bit on and pre-drill these holes bigger than the screws. So that way it's going to hold it up there, but you don't want it to tie into the wood because if it does, then it'll crack it and you don't really need it to tie into the wood. You need it to tie into the studs in the wall. So especially if you have steel stud, because if you don't pre-drill and it catches, the thread actually bites into this, it'll completely just destroy that corner. Even if you go tight in, it could crack it. That's why you just want to drill bigger than your screw that you're using. Not bigger than the head, just bigger than the threads. First thing you want to do is put your first screw in, throw your level up there, level it, and then smack in the next one, and then that one, and then that one. Even if you don't have studs here, I suggest doing it just for if it's going to bother you not being symmetrical. Once you have those in there, and then let's say they don't, you can put these drywall plugs in there. And I suggest the metal ones. You can use the plastic ones if you'd like. Now, I was mentioning with steel touch studs, the flip anchors, you can get those. They're flip toggles or they're known as toggler anchors. You'll see what I mean. They're literally on a zip tie. Some people might not like them because of the fact that they come with silver screws. So if that's going to bother you, check with your local store to make sure you can get them with black heads. Next thing you're going to want to do is I've also got stud here and a stud here. So what I'm going to do is either do one right in the center of both and then put a bolt in. But remember, when you do it, drill the hole bigger than the screw threads so that way it doesn't actually tie into here because if it ties into the board then you could get that cracking happening so from this point once your board is mounted i put these two into drywall anchors this one into wood and that one the reason why that one's in wood is it can get hidden anyway so as you can see here what we're going to have is i measured two inches down and that's what i set my hook height to uh for to the metal bracket which is right to the top of that metal bracket. And I'll show you in a second. But first, I said I wanted in three inches on both sides. Then I did three and three, which made six, minus the 48, because it's four feet, which gave me a total of 42. And then I did 42 divided by six, which came to seven. And then so every seven inches, I put a hook from there. So it went seven hook, seven hook, seven hook, seven hook. And then when it got to the end, that's where my last one went. Cause if you just measure the full length, it's measuring to you actually putting a hook right here. So you don't need to do that. You don't want it that. So now that we've got that measurement and we're all set and done, we're going to uh, mount the two side hooks and then mount them over. But like I said, if you're going to do support like this, you're just going to, uh, Make sure that you mount them over. Are you having fun? Hey you, she's just chewing her antler. Life of owning a dog. Okay, let's do this. So when you're doing this and you have your tape measure and you've marked out in between all of them, for me it was seven, right? So I went over here, I made the mark at seven, or well, it was in the center at seven. So if you look right here, what I've done is I've put the mark at seven and then I made sure I kept it pretty low and then I measured two inches down at two inches I made a little line like so and then I said okay that's right there and I made a basically an upside down T and what that does is it allows you to know where you have to put this in the center and you're gonna line this grab one of your screws if your hooks came with the screws 
And I'm just going to show you how I did it. So I'm going to cover up this one by putting it like this. There's my T. Line that bar right up in the center. Then you're going to somewhat just try and line it up like this. Then, after we have that, that's why you put that T mark. So that way you know exactly at two inches that you're lining it up. That's, and then you twist this. This level is very big for the process I'm doing right now. I just don't have my torpedo level here. And right about there. So it's level. And then from there, oh, sorry, I have to twist this. But you have to just make sure this is following it as you twist. Now I'm way out. So right there. Make sure I'm still flush on there. Bubble is lined up here. Pull it away, step back, take a look, make sure it is. Then drive in your next screw. Before you completely compress that screw all the way down, make sure you're still level with your level. And don't worry, because the wood is a little bit soft and we're not going right into studs with these screws because we have that drywall back, you can still twist it a little bit to line it up at the very end. But yeah, just do that with all the other hooks from this point. Just put in your last screw. If you can, try and use your finger to make sure it doesn't move. Then, want to. Looks like it might have to come back just a little bit. So all I do again, like I said, is I'll just loosen it a little bit, twist it, and then tighten them down. end up tweaking some that looks pretty good so just move along keep doing that and at the very end like I said you might have to go along and just double check them all right so when you're doing this and you're spacing them out I've totally messed up with my measurements that I told you last time I said six and I told you for six hooks the measurements I gave you are for seven hooks what it is is when you're calculating it you're not calculating by the hooks when you have one here and one here you're calculating the space that you need in between each hook so let's say you have seven hooks, you're gonna have six spaces because right in between here, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. And so what we ended up working and we divided it by was for six spaces. So if you have six hooks, you wanna actually divide for five spaces because you're gonna have five holes in between the hooks because you're putting one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So for the screws that I use to go into the wall, you have them right here. They're two and a half inch screws. They're just some wood screws that look like this. They look like an oversized drywall screw. Then what you have is if we're taking a look right here. Sorry, you can see my microphone in there a little bit, which is fine. Then you also have right here some drywall anchors. For number eight, I uh, swapped out the screws, not with these. I actually had leftover screws from other ones. I would just suggest grabbing a couple black screws or a small packet of black screws. It doesn't take much tools at all. And then if we take a look. That is the end result. You got that, and then you have that just above there. I have to center that a little bit better. Got to move just the bench over a little bit. But it turned out pretty good. So you can see. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks again for watching. Uh, for in here, you can either paint it, 
with uh, a little bit of a dabber. Or what you can do is if you have a black or brown pencil crayon painted in, and then another thing I've seen people do is just back out the screw on either side and then paint around it and then tighten your screw in and call it a day. I'll leave that up to you. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Just like if it helped you out and subscribe for more.